Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson, and today we're going to be looking at tutorial 8, which is going to be discussing updating recovery change protocols for file naming. So we're going to be discussing how we can name our files in MS projects so they're easy to access, we know when they occurred, we know when we did it, and it gives us a, a great advantage as far as organizing uh, our processes. So really, it, the file naming protocol, it's a methodology of formulating a system to manage your project updates, recoveries, changes, uh, your scheduled narratives too, although I don't include too much today because that's a separate document. It's not a Microsoft project file, but we can use the same file naming protocol to organize it as well. Uh, each update will form part of the contemporaneous schedule for the project. And the contemporaneous schedule is basically the as-built schedule for the project. How that project was planned and how it was built at those particular times. Because you're going to be updating with actual times. You're going to be showing the new plan with the recoveries. You're going to show the impacts of changes. And these are all things that you need to do to effectively manage your project and to document your project and as well to protect yourself uh, in case there's future claims or disputes due to delays, delays by you, delays by the client, etc. So these are all uh, methods that help you document your information and build a strong case for you if you need to or determine we don't have a case and we should just settle this because we caused the, the issues here. We'll talk about those kind of things in another uh, YouTube video coming up uh, shortly. So files are easily referenced. We'll have a naming protocol. There will be a, uh, a numbering system and for example if your project takes a number of months you'll be able to identify how many num months that takes. Uh, so you want to have it standardized. I'm giving you an example of how you can name it. You can use your own sort of process but whatever process you, sh you use it should be consistent. It should be easy to understand by everybody working within the organization. It should be easy to access for your purposes so you can check on the data and information based on the, the time period of the updates. So for example, a, a project that's 12 months long, it would have 12 updates. It would have a starting baseline file, uh, which would be your Microsoft project file, and then it would have 12 updates, one for each month if you did monthly updates. If you did bi-monthly updates, it'd have 24 updates. So it should follow that process. Narratives are every month when you do an update and you do a recovery, if you're falling behind, you try to explain the highlights of what went on so you have good documentation in place. You know, you can say you had X amount of bad weather days, these were the dates, these were the reasons and it's all documented in the narrative, but it's being pulled out of the schedule, that information. So that's another file naming that could also fit under this jurisdiction. So as you can see, we've got here uh, job, uh, we got number one, which you'll see is uh, for the month, the job number, office remodel uh, being uh, uh, the first, the name of the project, the update, what kind of file it is, and the date. And same thing, recovery. So that would be for the same month. Then we have the narrative, which would be a Word document usually, uh, some sort of uh, Word-oriented uh, document or a PDF. That would be the narrative, which would explain the highlights of what occurred during the previous month. Uh, then you go to the next month. Another month would pass. You'd do the updates during that period. And maybe that month went well and you didn't have any recoveries to do, so you can just do the narrative. If you're on time and on schedule, there's no recovery to do, so that would be just the narrative. Then you go to the next month, you got an update and a recovery again uh, that would occur and that would be identifying the, that update and recovery and then you'd have another uh, narrative in that example. And maybe then you have a change order and you want to check and maybe this change order came up after the update period, maybe a week after the update period. So you're dating this as to see how this is now impacting uh, the schedule. Sometimes you can also be uh, putting other files such as a contemplated change order. Maybe the client's thinking about this. You're going to look at cost implications. You're going to look at different scenarios. Again, you could come up with a naming protocol for that, but at least you would know the time period, the job, and the order of sequencing of how this occurred. So if we actually take a, a more in-depth look at how we could name them in this case, we can follow uh, this example here. So. 
we have here in this case, we've got the one represents the first update to the master project. So we know there's no updates prior to that. That's number one. And it happened on March 5th. Uh, then we know the job number, uh, 522. So whatever organization, you know, every job for your, for your suppliers and for your invoicing, you have a coding system. That would be your job number and you would put that in for what, whatever you use. In this case, I'm saying this is job number five of 2022. So that would be the job numbering. Next year, if, I, if it was job seven of 2023, then I would follow it with that methodology. Office remodel, and this one would be a recovery file. Same date. So obviously then the first one the update was behind schedule and then we came up with a new plan. One just showed the update to the status date. The other showed how we would get the time back after the status date. And that's where we would bring in that six step process that we talked about in tutorials five, six and seven, where we look at recovering the time, uh, particularly I think six. Next one here, we look at the job name. So you could put a client name, type of job, whatever it is. And in this case, I've just kept it simple. I put office remodel. Uh, you could put the name of the company, office remodel, client, however you would want to put that. But again, some sort of naming so you understand what it is and it's clear uh, reference. And then the type, is it an update? Is it a recovery? Is it a change order? Is it a narrative? That's where you could put in that naming process. Uh, there and we go ahead same thing with naming you can see uh, that process there and then we should for sure at the end have a date so you know as every file has a date that's typed in so we're very very clear on when this was updated to what was the status date that this was updated to or what was the date that this is based on in the case of a, a change order which is this one here so co number 522.1, this would be the first change order of job number 522. If I had the second change order, it'd be 522.2 um, and so forth. Again, you can come up with your own file naming protocol as long as it's consistent and it organizes itself. And then you could have a folder that's created for this particular project and all of them would be held in there. So it'd be very easy if you needed to go back, look at something, there's a claim, there's a delay or something. Uh, issue with something you could go back and you could see the contemporaneous schedule the as-built schedule for what happened or what the thoughts were on that project at that time and actually you can go back and you can do a contemporaneous analysis and just if it's a more complex claim and you can start from the beginning of the project going plus and minus plus and minus all the way through um, the project to really come to uh, a better understanding of how this project evolved and more clarity on what the overall issues were and whether a claim is uh, valid or not valid. So if you actually put that into, uh, you know, internet uh, based, uh, your Microsoft uh, file folder structure, you can see it's listed. Uh, they're organized one, two, three, four. This will sort them. That's why the number at the beginning is pretty good because it'll sort them based on uh, the numbers at the beginning. So if this job was 30 months long, there would be 30 right down. But I would be able to see the updates and I would know by date where it is and they would be organized in the folder in that order. Makes it very easy to uh, manage all the files and you're keeping separate files. You don't just start with one file at the beginning and keep updating and recovering that same file because you don't know what happened at those points in time. This is also very helpful for historical data looking at other similar projects that maybe you're in pursuit of. Uh, you're trying to uh, get those projects uh, through an RFP process. You have good historical records of how these projects went so you can make a good determination when you're trying to, to work out a new schedule for the project. So you can see sort of the numbering process. So hopefully that's helped you out with uh, having a better understanding of what the process is and what we're trying to accomplish uh, with our file naming because it really does order and organize our project. And you just sit and think about that a little bit. You know, we can sort of see how we went from one to the other, to the other, to the other. Okay, so you can process that. Uh, and uh, review it that way. And if you get a chance, uh, please subscribe to my uh, YouTube uh, channel. I think it should be just below in your YouTube uh, uh, viewing screen. And my name is Tom Stevenson.
and happy travels with MS Project and your project management career. Bye for now. See you next time.